All right. So, Anthony Ospelmeyer, we, uh, we are here. We are on Facebook Live. We are enjoying this here. Uh, I want to introduce my, my man, uh, yours truly, Brian Sinkoff. Got my Orioles throat. Well, actually, not a throwback shirt. We got my <laughs> Orioles, got my Orioles uh, fanatic shirt on, an awesome, actually, 47 brand shirt, just hanging out here in my casa. And we are with Anthony Ospelmeyer. Anthony is with uh, Empire Sports Breaks. Uh, he is a, uh, we're going to call him a professional uh, baseball card unboxer, if you will. Anthony, uh, you also run. Yeah, Anthony Cards as well on Facebook. Uh, Aussie, a lot of people in the Scotia area know you from your, your, your wiffle ball days. But tell us a little bit about your company, Empire Sports Breaks. And um, I'm just going to throw some teases out here. Woo! And tell us a little bit about Anthony Cards and Anthony, uh, Anthony, um, uh, Anthony Cards and Empire Sports Breaks. Yeah, well, Anthony Cards is just the, uh, the Facebook uh, profile that I use for, you know, doing different card stuff, but Empire Sports Breaks is really where everything happens. Uh, as you may or may not know right now, we're in the middle of a, a huge boom in the sports card world. And uh, if you collect it in the 90s or the 80s or even the 70s, things are really returning to form and there's a lot of new people out in the marketplace right now. So what we do on Empire Sports Breaks is we actually uh, purchase sealed cases of baseball, basketball, football cards. And then we sell the teams individually ahead of time. And then I go live on Facebook and we actually break each box of the cards. And then we ship out each card to whoever uh, owns it. So, so in your case, uh, you're a big Orioles fan. If we open a product and we sell the teams, you might buy the Orioles. If we open them live and we pull a Cal Ripken Jr. autograph, get shipped directly to you. Uh, so you could pay maybe 30 bucks for the Orioles, end up with a, a $50, $60 right. uh, Cal Ripken Jr. card. So it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a <clears throat> affordable way to get into sports card collecting, especially for people that don't have a hobby shop around them. All right. So a couple of things before we get into our uh, little um, unboxings here, unwrappings, if you will. Uh, Anthony, you'll be doing some breaks. Uh, if anybody wants to join an, an Anthony uh, and Empire Sports Breaks, just mention Brian Sinkoff, sell it with Sinkoff, whatever. Uh, say you watch this, and what are you going to give them off, Anthony, your next break or a break they want to enter? Yeah, we're going to uh, – if you if you join Empire Sports Breaks, we have a, a Facebook page, which is a public page. You can like that page. You can also join our private group. That way uh, your wife doesn't see you spending $100 in a baseball card break and uh, you don't get in trouble. Uh, if you join the group, which I'll, I'll drop the link in the comments here, if you join that group and mention that you saw me on this video here with Sync Off, I'm going to give you $10 off on your first break. Uh, so no matter what break you jump into, uh, never expires. Use it now. Wait a year. I don't care. $10 off. Um, All right. Just so watching tonight. Awesome. We'll keep reminding you of that. All right. So here's what we're doing. I have some old cards I got on eBay. I collected these bad boys as a kid. Uh, I'm going to open them. I'm going to chew the gum. The goal here, Anthony, is I'm going to chew the gum uh, while I'm going through each of the packs. Now, um, will you be able to last? I'll be able to, will be able to last for that long. Will I vomit? Will the gum dissolve? That's going to be the key. And I think that's why a lot of people are watching uh, here as well tonight. So, we're going to do this. We're going to start. We got 86. We got 87. We got an 88 tops and we got an 89 tops. We also have an 86 and an 87. I used to love these. Now in 86, I was 15. So this is kind of like my, you know, these are great years for me. I graduated high school in 89. I was 18. So these right here, I love getting at the, uh, the giant or the 7-Elevens back in Maryland because you would be able to at least see two cards, right? You'd at least know who you have. So it was always nice to pull these. You almost felt like you were cheating a little bit. All right, so Anthony, what do you think? You got your, uh, your price guide up. We're gonna see if we pulled any valuable cards. We're gonna start with the 89 tops. Um, anything in this, I believe Craig Jeffries, the Met is in this. It was some called the greatest hitter <laughs> to ever play, right? He was a future star <laughs> and I can recall the card. I believe you could pull it up on your screen. Did he not have his hands on his knees in a spring training photo? Could we get an 89 Greg, Greg Jeffries? Jeffries? 
Yes, oh, from this yes. set. The Did I not call it? I think he has his hands on his knees with the future stars at the top of the screen. Can you pull it? Can you share yes, the screen? Yeah, I can pull it up for you here in just a I second. I remember him you. as a prime, prime future star, and he never quite worked out. Got hurt, no, he right? Never quite, he never did quite work out. And uh, here's the picture yep, here. There it is. Dude, I was right, right? Yep. Spring training. Yeah, you nailed it. Dude, and this is, I this is remember the what these cards look like. Yeah, this is the thing too, Brian, is this, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, part of the hobby has not mm -hmm. changed. There's definitely people ch uh, chasing the next big thing at all times. And in 1989, the next big thing was Greg Jeffries, unfortunately, yep. for Mets fans, as we hear so often, uh, it wasn't in the cards for them. But no. But <laughs> all right. So we got Zach in. You could stop sharing the screen there, Aussie. Uh, we got Zach. We got, we're on Facebook Live. We got, uh, let's see, we got 26 viewers on Facebook Live. Um, we're also running a, uh, a watch party for the video in iron sports cards. That's uh, right. Which is, which is a pretty, pretty big All right. group as well. So Zach, this is obviously before Zach was a twinkle in dad's eye. Zach was only eight. Uh, I was only 18 when this set came out, Zach. So I'm going to chew the gum. Zach, you want a half of the gum as well? Uh, quarter. All right. So Zach, do we start with the gum, Anthony? We're going to start with the gum. Where is the gum? The Make gum, sure you show it on the screen first. The gum is right here, and it's um, ooh, it's right on top and of of Arrestus Destrata. You can see where the gum was <laughs> for thirty one years. This gum was right there on Arrestus Destrata. So there's the back of the card for Arrestus, uh, sort of a utility infielder for the eighty nine Pirates. Zach, it feels so like let's, a rock. It feels like a rock. Actually, has absolutely zero <laughs> smell, none. Like Literally. Fun fact. Fun fact. Before you eat it, sink off. Is Tops actually started as a candy company uh, before they started doing sports cards? So the 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 reason they started doing the gum and the sports cards was actually a way to sell the candy. Uh, mm. So, well, it was similar to the the, the Hannes Wagner 1906 right it was <laughs> that was to sell cigarettes to sell yep. cigarettes right yeah yeah the famous right. story with uh, that Wagner of course is he didn't yep. have kids smoking cigarettes all right T206 Aussie right. T206 all right so Zach do you want a little piece yes you get to eat it don't don't oh, um nice. don't report me to child protective services I'm gonna give my 12 year old son did you hear that listen listen Oh, a loud <laughs> break. Zach, you want to try it? Not first. All right, I'm going to just... Mm. Oh, yeah, nice crunch. <laughs> oh, no. Is oh. good? Oh. <laughs> you got to chew it the whole time you go through the cards, right? Mm. All right. Oh, it smells like bad wax. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. It's not your standard bubblicious. That's it's for sure. gone. It smells like it's like mold. <laughs> it's all in my mouth. <laughs> throw it away in there. No, I want to eat it. It was like moldy bad bread and bad decisions. It tasted <laughs> like the combo of the two. All right, Red Sox team leaders. Oh yeah. It's good. Oh, Neil Heaton of the Expos. Look at that solid wind up, dude. Heck of a leg kick there. By the way, by the way, was it just me or was every 80s player, do they all, all the pitchers had mustaches? Mustache and he's packing a huge lip of chewing tobacco yep. too. All right, I'm a big baseball nerd. I've never heard of Jack Lazarko. Yeah, a lot of these guys are going to be, I mean, the 80s. Scott so, Bales. Scott heard Bales. Of him. Yeah, we got nothing. Listen, 1989, so 1989. We're still talking right. three years before I was born, even. Sink. Oh, I finished it. That was terrible. John Tudor, former Red Sox pitcher. Didn't that bad. Here with the Dodgers, sort of the end Lengthy of his career. Lefty. I need water. Yep. Ooh, Al Nipper. What did I tell you? Every pitcher has a bad mustache and a and, a, and chewing tobacco too. Look at yep. lip. <laughs> Ooh, here's a Hall of Famer, Alan Trammell of the Detroit Tigers. Alan Trammell, barely a Hall of Famer, but yeah. he's in there. No, the, this is a this is probably well, this is the dead era for baseball cards, Zach. Not many good ones here at all. Andre Scalaraga, who was oh, an expo, and um, 
And also, uh, of course, the Rockies, right? Yep. Here's a Yankee, Gary Ward. That was the solid Yankee years right oh, there. Oh, that was a rough stretch for the Yankees, yep. All right, what did we say? A, a pitcher and a mustache, Jerry Don Gleaton. <laughs> Look at that, Jerry Don. How often huh? do you see what's a, he, what's a he Jerry worth? Don? Dude, I bet you, so I'm going to say 82 cents. 80 oh, cents. I don't know about that. You don't think Let's that much? Let's take a look. A Let's take a look if those cards are even selling. Oh, here's an Oriole. And now a man, oh, a former manager, Terry Kennedy. Right? Let me see. Terry Kennedy. This was the Orioles' why not year of 89. When they came off the 0-21 start in 88 and 89, we damn near made the playoffs. Here's Whoa. another expo, Tom Foley. Tom Foley. Tom Foley. Who could forget? Here's a Matt, Dave Magadan. Dave Magadan. Look how skinny these dudes are, dude. Yeah, Dave Magadan is still around the game in some form or fashion. Yeah, here's Lloyd Mosby of the Blue Jays. Lloyd Mosby of the Blue Jays. What did Jerry Don Gleaton go for in that? There are no Jerry Don Gleaton cards currently sell. What about uh, um, selling? So, what, oh look, I got. Oh, check this out, dude. This comes with glossy All Stars and hot prospect baseball cards. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to send away for that anymore. You think I'm going to be able to do it, dude? So, do we have any cards of any value in this set? Sure. Right here. Uh, Trammel in this, in this set. No, Trammel's not going to be a guy you're looking for. Well, uh, I mean, in what I pulled, nothing is of what oh, I pulled. Oh, none of that is stuff nothing. is going to be worth even a dollar. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, uh, you know. Superstars like Don Mattingly at the time, you're going to be okay. Maybe it, maybe it ends up in a dollar bin. Uh, <laughs> but this is definitely a difficult set, 89 is. Uh, I think there is a Jose Uribe card that is actually yeah, really? a pretty difficult pull. All right. For what year, 89? And, uh, it's – it's yeah, it's still it's still it's like a dollar card. Oh, it's a dollar card, and that's people are wanting it. Yeah, it's nothing special. I don't know if graded it might all go right, for all something, right. but yeah. All right, so let's 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 go back into it here now. We're gonna go now uh, for nineteen eighty eight. This is my going into my senior year of high school. Anything in the eighty eight set we want to look for here 88 tops i think zach's gonna come back with me here and chew the gum he wanted to chew the gum thinking that was like an honor uh the gum tasted awful it literally had no it, it tasted like stale like just stale food like a stale uh like stale crackers it actually tasted <laughs> like stale crackers that's a great description all right so 88 we got anything in 88 you could share your screen if you see anything that gets sassy. We're with Anthony Meyer, Empire Sports Breaks, Anthony Sports Cards, or uh, Anthony Cards. You can uh, friend him on Facebook. Join the Empire Sports Private Group. If you're watching this, uh, he's going to give you a $10 break credit just for mentioning uh, Brian Sinkoff, sell it with Sinkoff, or even just that you watch this crazy unboxing. We're chewing gum. We're opening cards. Anthony, what do we got here in 80? Eight tops. 88 tops. You're really only looking for the Tom Glavin rookie. Of Tom course, Glavin rookie. Pictures. And what's he going to cost you? What's he going to, what can I get him for? 10 uh, bucks? Base, a base card uh, of the regular set, you're going to get a, about $2.50 right now. <laughs> or, yeah. I mean, the, the, the late 80s are very difficult this is, time period. This is cards. the dead era, dude. This is the dead era of baseball cards. This is the era, I would argue, and you know this stuff better than me because this is your business now. Um, this almost killed the baseball card business this, this year, these years, correct? It wasn't yeah, until maybe like the upper deck of 90 and maybe stadium club a little bit that sort of saved it. And then it became more hobby oriented, uh, you know, more collector oriented, but this was a terrible era. Yeah. Really from 1979, right in through the early two thousands, you're looking at what they call the junk wax era, yeah. really a lot of overproduction, you can still buy full cases of uh, cards unopened uh, at this point, which just goes to tell you that uh, supply was way higher than demand and the values just blew out of the seller. So uh, right. even, even your Tom Glavins and Hall of Famers are not going to be worth much here. 
All right, here we go. This is the 88 set. Gum is conveniently already broken up for us in threes. Once again, little to no smell. Zach, would you like to uh, partake? I'm you not entirely one? sold on the fact that that gum might also be uh, the gum you had for the 89 pack might just be left over from 88. Yeah, let me know. try it. <laughs> You're beating both. Mm. Good. A little more of a chew. A little sweet. Good or bad? Oh, my God. Stale. <laughs> wax um stale candy this is like the halloween candy that was eight years old you ever yeah. had that does oh, you've yeah. all eaten the halloween old halloween candy but way worse well here's what i want to oh. put in your head i don't i don't want to scare you and zach but you know yeah. the, the the taste of the gum is going to be uh different based upon where you're getting the packs from and where those people have stored them. So oh, talking about packs that oh, could be in somebody's that? basement for Moly. last 25 no, years. <laughs> uh, somebody's attic getting cooked at, you know, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so uh, your doctor is probably dude. not going to give you a pass on eating this gum. So you're right, dude. Very good call. And I did taste a little mold in the last two packs. <laughs> All right. We got some good cards here. I got an all-star. An all-star. Is this a rookie? No. Yes, he's a rookie. And I've freaking never heard of Al. Al Pe per Perdique? <laughs> Perdique. Perdique. And he's a tops. All-star rookie. I swear to God, I'm a baseball nut, and I've never heard of him. Maybe Pirates fans out there could comment on him. Hell, if you're a Pirate fan, I'll give you these cards. At this point, I'm just going to just throw stuff out there. All right, this is um, this is a good-looking card. I believe this is Joe Carter and maybe Brett Butler on the Indians Leaders Pack, right? Joe Carter. Does that look Joe like – Carter, of course, would go Does that look like hit. Joe Carter and Brett Butler? Yes, it does. Joe Carter would, of course, go on to hit a walk-off home run in the 90, oh. was it 92 or 93? 90, uh, no, 93 for the Blue Jays, right? Yeah, 93. Yeah. Here is uh, an Andre Dawson National League All-Star card. Now, that might be a good one to check the value on. It's going to be laughable. Check the value laughable. of that bad boy. It's, it's card laughable, number but... 401. This is actually an ANL Leaders runs batted in card and would you believe the al the nl leader in rbis was andre dawson can you guess how many rbis he had in 1987 to win to 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 be the rbi leader he had 137 rbis that's a hell of a season tim wallach and the card a, unfortunately is not even worth 50 cents are you uh, serious yeah so i'm just gonna pull something up and show you here in a all second. right there's, I got some good cards in this one, dude. We'll this take a look. Some... We'll take There's a look some... at a uh, something that sold. This will make you laugh or cry. Uh, probably cry if you're a Cubs fan. Uh, but see this Andre Dawson here. This is signed. This this has his autograph on it, and it only sold for six dollars and fifty cents. Oh, dude, that's pathetic. Um, no third-party authentication on that card. But, but what still. about – what would it be on, on not signed, just a no, regular not signed, Andre. you're looking at 10 to 50 cents tops. Okay. All right, here's a Benito Santiago. Uh, this is a good one. This I remember this. This was, I believe, and I'm not even going to look at this. I believe – I'm not looking. This was a 1987 record-breaker card. You can see I'm not looking, okay? I believe he set a – and I don't know the number, but I believe he set a rookie record – for uh, uh, consecutive uh, games hit, you got a hit in. Consecutive game hitting streak. For Is rookies. that right? 87. Benito Santiago set a record. Yes, I'm right. 34 game rookie hitting streak. So this is record breaker card. Remember they had the record breaker cards back then? Okay. Here's a Garth Orge. Oh, Love that Garth name. Orge. For the Blue wow. Jays. Dude, Mike should Moore. probably be in Cooperstown. Mike Moore. All right, I love this one. Here's Expos team leaders. 
hey guys, I just want you to spring training. Let's go in Aussie's backyard and let's just take a photo and we're going to slap that on. Look, that literally looks like Hesfield. Look at the back. <laughs> Dude, look at the back. It's got a nice gradient to it there. Look at, look at how bad that, that doesn't even look like a real field. There's like dead what, grass what in the background. Card? Dude, there's a dead grass in the background. What? Who do we got on the front of that? Oh, this looks like where the uh, gum was. The gum, it's all like oily. Oh, yeah. This is uh, Timmy Rock Rains and maybe Tim Wallach. Yes, Tim Rains and Tim Wallach. Tim Rains, the Hall of Famer. Yep. All right, here's another Hot Prospects baseball cards. You can mail away for those. Oh, here's a Met. Here's a Met. Any Mets fans want a Howard Johnson card? Hojo. The only baseball player to have, have a hotel chain named after him. Yes. Cheesy mustache. Andy Allenson. He oh, serves fries at Burger wait, King now. Wait. Here's a Mattingly. There you go. What's that one worth? An 88 top 88, Mattingly. 300 Mattingly. Number card 300. What's Mattingly going for these days? Yeah, that's about a... It's, Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make you sad here. All right. All right. If you're a Don Mattingly fan, and so many people are, you can head over to eBay right now and buy a lot of '98. Oh my God! How many of them? This guy's you get folders. What is this? Wait, for? you get one of them though, right? Yeah, you get one for ten dollars. Nobody's buying that. All right, well these that's actually, so. Can we say this is a five dollar? Uh, these is are this not cards. These are folders. Look at that. These are folders made. <laughs> to oh, that's look like the cards. Terrible. The, the card you can have for three dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so it's worth uh, nothing. Yeah, it's not worth much. It's probably All right, not. I, let's say this way: this was a this this eBay purchase was far more than any of these cards are worth. Uh, Mike Kingery, Mariners. Dave Johnson, Mets manager. Nice mustache, Davey. Jose Cruz of the Astros. Look at those uniforms. His son, Jose Cruz Jr., played for yep. the Blue Jays. This is Tim Burtzis. Never heard of him. And actually, this is one of my favorite all-time Orioles. And I'm not kidding. Mike Boddicker. Mike Boddicker. MVP uh, or had a great 1983 season. Won 20 games in 84. Helped us uh, in the World Series in 83. I believe he won 18 games. And I don't know if I you know getting, this, sink, but uh, Mike getting... Bottinger is actually a greeter at the Silver Springs Walmart now. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> he might as well be. All right, we're going to 87. Should I open this from 87 first? Sure, or do we want to open yeah. this? Go ahead and open the cello, which is this the clear one. one. Clear. All right. Yeah. All right, this, just so you know, Anthony, the, the, and I know this is a, a, maybe the cost of, uh, you know, you look at inflation, this was 69 cents back in 87. Yeah, so I was making to, that price point and giggling to themselves. Yeah, I was loving, loving these set, these packs, because I would go borrow a few dollars from my mom, she'd hand me, and I would, op I would get, so I would nerd out, I would get like four of these, on an Oriole night, and I would organize, open and organize my cards while watching the games. I used to love it. Love it. All right, we're chewing the gum as well. There is gum in this thing. Center of the pack. You see it? Oh, I see it. We're going to unveil the gum. We're unveiling the gum. I'm going to, let's, let's hear how it rip, rips. Oh, it's a little not, doesn't seem as hard. Should I try it all at once? Go for it. Oh, mold, an old attic. <laughs> that was in uh, Aunt, Gr or that was in Granny Weatherall's attic for about 20 oh. years after Grandpa passed away. Can I get sick from this? <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I can't make any guarantees. So now the 1987 this... set is actually a little bit more interesting, Sink. You're looking for guys like Barry Bonds, Bo Jackson, Mark McGuire. Okay. Uh, 
there is still some value to be had in some of the other superstars. Um, All right. But definitely, so let's, let's... definitely looking for Bonds, rookies. Unfortunately, the big, the bigger rookies you're looking for, Greg Maddox and Jose Canseco are in the top. The top's yeah. traded, which came out after. Right. All right. So this is Ron Renicky, I believe, a manager today, correct? Current, yeah. He's a current manager of the Boston Red Sox. Yes, he is. And I believe Gary Renicky's um, brother, and Gary Renicky, played for the Orioles. This is Ron Gary. Might have to call Gary to come pitch for the Red Sox. <laughs> This is uh, Gary Carter, All-Star, Hall of Famer, yep, the late Gary, Gary Carter. Carter. The Candy Man, Tom Candiotti. Oh, that, that was the worst tasting gum, the 87. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's be honest. 87 was one of the worst years, period. Dave Von Olin. Oh, this guy was such a stiff for the Orioles. Juan Bonilla. Look at that old school batting jer uh, jersey. Juan Bonilla. John McNamara, manager for the Sox. Manager of the 86 Boston yes. Red Sox that got smacked by the Mets. How about this one? Wade Boggs All Star. Look that one up. No, that's basically worthless. He led the AL in average in 86. Can you guess his average? Guess he was a machine. I'm going to guess 325. 357, dude. Wow. Stunned. Mattingly finished second at 352. Puckett third, Pat Tabler fourth. Wade Boggs is a guy that, uh, despite being a Hall of Famer, does not get a ton of love. In yeah, well, he was, kind of a, he was kind of a dick. Excuse my there, language. There is one guy, however, uh, that has an entire basement full of only Wade Boggs items. He's on Twitter uh, he calls it the Boggs Tavern, and it's just Great. loaded with uh, Wade Boggs stuff. Uh, you can have so that, that 1987 tops Wade Boggs number 608. Somebody's trying to get five bucks for it. I think they'll probably end up settling out of court for two dollars at <laughs> most. <laughs> All right. Now this guy is an Oriole. His name is not Don Ass. It's Don Assy. Okay. No. <laughs> Cuteness, but a lovely mustache and a nice perm going on for the kids. Dale Mahorsik of the Rangers. <laughs> nice Dale, mustache. How come, Dale, how come you didn't race? Oh, my horse sick. Uh, <laughs> love the White Sox uniform. Here's Dick Dotson, Richard Dotson, a pitcher. These look like all – I love that logo, though. Look at that old Sox logo. These are, these are all like spring training shots. Oh, Lee Mazzilli. Right, Lee Mazzilli, former, for, former yeah. first base coach of the New York Yankees and dynasty also, teams in the '90s, and also was the Orioles skipper for about six minutes. Orioles Storm Davis, handsome man right there, if I do say so myself. Brian Dayette, that was uh, Anthony's um, nephew, was named Brian Dayette, not related. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no idea what the hell that means. Scott Bradley of the Mariners. Oh, there is nothing here. And Darnell Coles of the Tigers. I mean, the just, other... just how many guys have you you never even heard of? They're absolute slobs. Hey, can we get – you think we can still get into this trip of four to the 88 spring training? You think we can maybe send away for that? I, I think you might have a chance. Tim Hewlett, former Oriole infielder as well. Oh, Ted Powers rocking an 80s fro. Look at that. Look at that, dude. You think that's a perm or is that real? Is that natural? Uh, it could be Jerry Curl. Here's Wally Backman. Wally Bachman, another uh, member of that 86. That looks World like Series an in-action shot. Here's the candy man, Candy Maldonado. You're, you're starting to put together quite the Candy Maldonado collection. Mike Kukro, I believe, pitched for the Cubs as well. Yes, he did. Ray Knight, 86 Mets, right? Here Hero. comes Knight, and the Mets are going to win it. Fred Tolliver, never heard of him. Leon Durham. Isn't he the bull? Yes. <laughs> bull Durham. Greg Brock. Dodgers. Jack Howell. Woof. Angels. This is, this is a rough pack. Dave Gumpert. Cubs. Jimmy Sunberg, the manager, or the uh, uh, catcher, I believe, with the Rangers. I pitched. I think he went, yeah, he also played for the Rangers. Here he is with the Royals. Oh, oh, oh. We got an epic bull. 
Roger Clemens. He looks look pre steroids. He actually looks thin. What's the price on that? That's a nice card. What's the price on that? Are we going six bucks? Are we going six to seven? Six to seven bucks he goes. <laughs> what do you see? Say, what Eighty-seven dude? tops. Rocket goes for. Go ahead. Pop it up. Pop it up. Pop it up like that. Come on. Give me some love. So now, if you have, if you end up sending that in to get graded, which at this point, if you send a PSA, you're looking for, uh, you're looking at probably about twelve bucks to get it graded. You'll get it back in six months or so. And if you spend that 12 bucks, you could end up selling that card for a whopping $20.50, assuming that it's a PSA 10. Uh, so there's a $20 one. There's 49. That's a PSA 10. No, that's a Topps 10. Tiffany. So oh. the Topps Tiffany is a little bit different. That came in kind of like a, uh, what you might see now as a completed set. Uh, those were more scarce. Uh, but here we are down here, two-card lot for 99 cents. <laughs> Why is it so bad, dude? Just because there's a million of them. So this is worth nothing. It's it's worth twenty bucks if it's a PSA ten. And it's probably not. Uh, I can tell you right now, it looks pretty sharp actually. It's a it's a little off center, up and down though. Uh, so you're probably looking at an eight or nine there. Okay. All right, we're gonna finish this pack, Bill Swift. Mariners, Daryl Motley, no relation to Motley Crew, And then lastly, with the 1980s starter jacket, Satiny, is Rob Murphy. Now, call me crazy. Let's just have a look-see at these cards. It's just an ugly-looking card, isn't it? I mean, just I don't it mean is. the guy. I mean, just the style of the card is just heinous. It reminds me of those uh, 80s station wagons with the wood grain yes. on the side terrible yeah it's terrible although it does turn out to be one of the more beloved sets why uh just for nostalgia purposes i guess probably because it's so ridiculous um but all right all right yeah. so i still have an 87 where this is just a regular wax pack i'm going to open this as well and chew the gum okay fresh opening Thumb is in threes. We going all at once? Yeah, I would I would compare the chewing this gum to like licking 25 envelopes. <laughs> it's just that leaves that eh on your tongue, right? Oh. They all taste moldy and cardboardy. Believe it or not, it's actually a little sweet, but it dissolves instantly. All right, here we go. Dwayne Murphy, A's. <gasps> Robbie Thompson, San Francisco, <laughs> not that Robbie Thompson, San Francisco Giants. He was actually a Topps All-Star rookie. Look up the Robbie Thompson, 87, San Francisco Giants. What's that card going to work? That's, uh, that's not worth anything, man. A dollar? not even worth looking up. Bobby Thompson, uh, now goes by Robbie Thompson, mm -hmm. and of course was the bench coach for the Yankees for the last decade or so, uh, along with Joe Girardi. But that card, that card's not even a, a thirty cent card. All right, so this is a Lee Smith, Chicago Cubs, looking young. He was in his fifteenth year even back then. No, I'm kidding. He was in his <laughs> two four. So this was his seventh season, and he looks young. Lee Smith story. Can I tell everyone the quick Lee Smith story? Oh, I know look the at story. His card. I know All the right, story. All right, so Lee Smith, I'm doing, um, I'm working as a producer for the CBS affiliate in Baltimore in 1995. You can actually look this one up. Uh, Anthony, pull up Lee Smith's like, like stats thing from 95 Orioles. It was the only year he was on the Orioles. And I believe that year he got a milestone save. Might have been his 300th. Right? Does that sound right? How many saves did Lee Smith have in his career? Uh, game Four. saved. He had 478. Okay. All right. So maybe this – what what year did he pitch to? He pitched up to 97. All right. So this would have been his 400th save. He got his 400th save with my Orioles. Um, okay. So 
Um, I was doing TV for, I was a producer at the CBS affiliate uh, WJZ in Baltimore in 1995. And my job on a regular basis is to go into the Oriole locker room and get interviews post game. Well, Lee had gotten a save that day. You could probably even look this up. Google Orioles, uh, Lee Smith, 400 save. We can probably even get the date on this to, to tell you that I'm not BSing my story, even though that is my <laughs> initials. Um, so I get in the locker room with the camera, with the photographer a little bit late. Lee had already sort of addressed the media. Okay. So Lee is sitting now, Lee Smith, okay, he's like 6'7". I mean, he's a huge man, just a huge dude. He's actually 6'8", 235, but this is like 10 years before that. I mean, he was like over 300 pounds. There's no question, 6'8". So he's sitting down in his chair at his locker room. He had just gotten out of the shower. He had a towel on. So he... I say, hey, Lee, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know, we're here. We, we want to get an interview. I know we're a little bit late here. Um, you know, it's a big day for you. Congrats. Do you have some time for us? So Lee, who is from, like, I believe, Arkansas. And, and I just want to interrupt you right there. I want to interrupt you there and let the guys on the Iron Sports Card page know. You definitely want to, to stick here for this story. This is a hilarious story. All right. About Lee Smith uh, All and, right. my, and my buddy Brian here. All right, so Lee had gotten his 400 save. He's sitting in his locker. He had done all the interviews with everyone else. We came late. I'm trying to get him by myself. You had to talk to Lee. It's his 400 save. I say, Lee, I'm sorry. Congratulations. We just got here running around. Can we get you for an interview? So Lee has got a towel on. That's all. So Lee in his Arkansas accent, is that where he's from or Oklahoma? Oklahoma, Arkansas. Louisiana. Louisiana, okay. I knew it was the South. He's like, damn. He's like, um, as June, he called me a June bug. He goes, it's June bug. Uh, I'm all naked here. And he's asking me for an interview. And um, he goes, all right, all right, let me get a shirt on. So Lee Smith stands up, okay, because he's sitting in a chair. He stands up, and I'm going to curse here, so cover your ears, kids. But this is what Lee Smith said to me. He stands up, he looks down at me, he goes, Damn, you's a short motherfucker, ain't you? <laughs> so for the rest of the season, several Orioles called me a short motherfucker every time they saw me. A sh I was the short motherfucker TV guy. Uh, it was like Brady Anderson. I don't know if Messina was one of those guys, but Brady Anderson and Rafael Palmero and Lee Smith definitely called me a short MF for the rest of the 1995 season. And Anthony, am I right with this 400 save in 95 Orioles? It was, believe it or not, Sink, it was not. Uh, what did he do in 95? Well, 95, he was with the Angels. It's 94 right, so 90, you're thinking of. 94. Was, what, 94, what he, he did lead the league uh, with 33 saves. Was the Orioles. Uh, with the Orioles. He was an all-star uh, so, finished fifth in the Cy Young, which is very yeah, rare. He, uh, he did, did he get his 400th save that year? He had no, to. No, he have. got his 400th save in 1993, the, next year? the year prior with the Yankees. Okay, all right. So it may have been the fact that I'm just looking things up. Uh, let's see here. It was some, something he did in that game where we had to talk to him because it was a big – I don't remember what it was, but anyway, I was the short motherfucker for the rest of the season. And that's my Lee Smith story. I was a short MF. Okay. Just saying <laughs> for the rest of the year. He started, short. He, he did start in 2000 or in 2000 in 1994 with the Orioles at age 36, his first 12 games, he had 12 saves and zero ERA. Okay. So that may have been what you're talking it might about. Have, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. It was something dude. All right, let's keep going. We got next, there's my Lee Smith story. We got Robbie, uh, I love this, Robbie Spillman, never heard of him. Barry Jones, another bad mustache. Barry Jones. Mask with the Pirates. Larry Anderson, we're rocking the stash again. What did I tell you? If you were a pitcher in the 80s, you had a mustache. <laughs> that was the rule. Frank White for the uh, Royals, very good. Solid second baseman. Played there forever, dude. Part of the George Brett infield with UL Washington with a toothpick. 
Tippy Martinez, again, mustache. Mustache on the mustache. Uh, a solid, solid relief pitcher for the O's. Solid relief pitcher. Marty Barrett for the Red Sox. Grin and Marty Barrett, right? Steve, this looks like an error card, but it's not. What's your name? Uh, Steve Fireovid. Uh, Stevie Firevid. Uh, <laughs> Steve, his name is Steve Fireovid, dude. I have never heard of the dude in my life. But see, you got to remember, back then, there was no Wikipedia, no baseball reference. Anthony, this was our Wikipedia, dude, in the oh, 80s. Yeah. This was everybody, it. You, everybody in the 80s had to have a Steve dude, Fire over. Dude, you had to, that was how you learned the freaking stats right there, kids. The stats were on the back. You didn't have Wikipedia. You had to have the cards. You didn't know what the guy hit last year, unless you got a baseball almanac. This is... Uh, Alex Trevino, John Candelaria, the Candyman. They're all Candyman for you. Bill, Bill Gullickson. Absolute slobs. Bob, oh, we don't have a mustache. Bob Kipper. You know, I do love the fact that the some of these uniforms haven't changed. There's uh, Bob Sebra. What a, I mean, these are just, this is unbelievable. Kevin Bass. Kevin Bass. And Enos Cabell, who played on the Astros, I think, in the eight in the eighty for the eighty Astros, right? Who, if I'm not mistaken, Enos Cabell played for the eighty Astros who lost to the Dodgers in the NLCS. Look that one up, Encyclopedia Boy. <laughs> oh, am I right? Enos Cabell, eighty Astros. All right, here we go. We got two more. We got two more, Aussie. What are we doing? What are we opening first? This, these are the oldest packs. These are 34-year-old packs. <laughs> Let's I'm do chewing that the gum first. All right. So if you're just joining us, Brian Sinkoff here. We got Anthony Osfelmeyer, Empire Sports Breaks, Anthony Cards. Uh, Anthony does uh, case breaks. And if you want to get in on one of these case breaks, you mention um, you watch this tonight, and he's going to give you $10 off, and that does not expire. All right, so here we go. And that's only for the folks on Sinkoff's friends page, not the guys in the Iron Sports Card. Yeah, group don't be getting be, it's cute. It's got to be the first break. Yeah, don't be getting cute, guys. You you know, you already, you know, beggars can't be choosers. All right, so here we go. Here's the gum. Ooh, it's, Ooh, it's in tash, dude. Freshness. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, just like that, it breaks. No smell at all. No smell to this bad boy. Throw it all in there. That's what she said. Oh. This one was stored in Aunt Myrna's basement. Real musty mold, dude. Now, Ed White on Iron Sports Cards is chiming in here, and he's letting you know, 1986 tops. Uh, there are a number of valuable cards there, especially in the, the PSA 10 form, just because they all have a low population because – this set is notorious for having bad centering uh, and just overall the cards have been hard to get high grades. So for a PSA 10 Pete Rose, you're looking at 140 bucks. And these, again, Ed White on Iron Sports Cards is sending, sending these valuations All right. in. Eric Davis, $200 card. As an, as That's PSA from the 10. Reds, right? Yep. Nolan Ryan is a $350 plus card in a PSA 10. Roger Clemens is 100 plus. And the Ryan Sandberg is a $500 plus card in PSA 10. Now, again, coming right out of the pack, it's very unlikely that you've got a PSA 10 in 1986. How uh, would you have had to get one in, in, a, in a factory sealed? <clears throat> no, you could still pull it out of the pack, but you've got to then send it in to be graded. And it, again, with the centering, people putting them in their bike spokes, uh, denting the corners, things like that. It's easy to uh, to not get a 10. All right. I'm kind of excited here now. There's some value. All right. Raymond, then I'm probably going to pull duds. Raymond Romero. <laughs> Ram Ramon Romero, they're all going to be Mike duds for the most part. Kukro, who did have a cheesy mustache with the Cubs in the 80s. Oh, this is a really bad-looking centered card. I can kind of see. Maybe not. Sid Bream. Sid Bream, famous for uh, – didn't he, wasn't he the one that made the slide there into home plate for the Braves? 
Yes. Uh, in the 90s. In the World Series or something. They... Rick Shu, former Oriole, played on the 88 crappy Oriole team. Bad mustache. Milt Thompson, Braves. Tom Pachorek, Mets. The hell position is he? Outfield first base. Bob Baylor, Dodgers. Britt Burns. Oh, this is a stiff pack, dude. I mean, these are all commons. Brian Diet. I think we pulled any, him in another any set. Idea? Do you remember what uh, what you paid for these 86 packs? All told, I'll tell you exactly what I got this whole lot for, if you will. Um, all told, I was in it for, I wanted to do this as there was no money making. This was merely entertainment purposes only. Um, I bought this for all in. This cost me nine dollars. Not bad. And Especially six dollars the, shipping, dude. These eighty, these eighty-six cards. Again, there are some other names in the set too. George Brett has value in this set. Storm Steve Davis, Mendes, uh, Andre Dawson. So, you're Junior at Ortiz, Mark Hill. Fat catcher, I remember him. <laughs> you always felt ripped off when you got a friggin' checklist, didn't you? I mean, that's just a joke, dude. I don't know, though. If you're a set collector, again, nowadays we get the checklists right off of the internet. In but back then, you, you needed need the that checklist. checklist to know which cards you need for the set. Joe Necro, who was 84 in this photo and managed to play nine more years after this. <laughs> okay. That's half of them. Joe, we the can win a trip. With rip rent a trip to four to the 87 spring training. Is that too late? <laughs> Richie Hebner. Dave Bergman. Oh, these are this is stiff Jones, dude. Shane Raleigh. I love those Phillies uniforms. They they wear these again. You notice that? Yeah, those baby blues. Yeah, love them. Oh God. Ken Oberkfell. If I'm not mistaken. A rare beard. Yeah, going beard. 30, third baseman. Willie Upshaw. And right in a row, another Blue Jay. Rance Cheesy Mullinix. Cheesy Stash. Probably the only man in, in the world named Rance. Jamie Kokenauer. What the hell position is he? He was a pitcher. Don Carmen. Gary Pettis, I believe, a coach, right? Yeah. Lee Mazzilli. There he is. Would become a Met down the road. Gary Templeton. For the Cardinals as well as the Padres. Bob McClure. Steve Sachs. Steve Sachs was another guy. A lot of people thought he was going to be something yep. that never was. This is look at the framing on this one on Rob Wolfong. How bad does that look, dude? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You got a really bad cut there up yep. at the top. All right. This is the last one, dude. I got nothing from 86. Nothing. I don't even think I got a Hall of Famer in that pack, did I? I don't believe so. All right, last, last pack. pack is where it's at. Let's see if it's got it. Lady six, it. last pack. We're chewing the gum as well. We're chewing the gum as well. Here we go. Here we go. Big bucks, no whammies. Big bucks, no whammies. Here's the gum. Oh, you hear that? Damn near broke a tooth on that piece. Would you believe? The 86 gum, of all the gum, tasted the best. And I think you had a good call as to where it was stored. Ooh. All right. All-star Ricky Henderson. What's that going for? Let's take a look. On-base percentage leaders is what this was. Probably nothing. It's card number 757. 16. Uh, it's, it's about a dollar. It's about a buck. Okay. 
I never PSA liked these 10, cards. Though, PSA 10, it's a $70 card almost. But I don't think, look at the framing on that. Not good, right? No, top centering and bottom, is, it's not centered. Perfectly. And the center on the sides is terrible. All right, I hated these cards even back then. A turn back the clock. Uh, Willie, is that Willie? <laughs> Willie Mays. Mays. Yep. I am I mean, not a fan of those nothing. types of what's, cars either. What's that worth? That's a throwaway, dude. That's worthless. Yeah. Bobby Wine. Don Ass. <laughs> Assy. <laughs> Here's a Mattingly All Star, which is worth nothing, is it? What's uh, that worth? Seven it's probably gonna be about a it's gonna be about a two to three dollar card as well. It looks off center, doesn't it? It is off center top to bottom. Yeah. Is that worth? Pull up your screen for poops will, and giggles. Yeah. We'll, take, we'll take a look here. You guys can see that this one here is about a dollar <clears throat> seventy-five free shipping. <laughs> take a look down here. This is what we're talking about. Oh my god, look at that bad boy. This is the regular Don Mattingly. If you can get that and get it gem mint. You got a almost a four hundred dollar card. Is that a, that's not as rookie though, is it? No, it is not as rookie. Okay. Uh, now, was Don, see, Don see Don the difference was, here. See, Don was the difference. Donris was his rookie, right? Uh, well, no, he had rookies in uh, eighty five uh, tops, I believe, as well, right? But what was his? I, I thought a Donris. I thought the eighty four Donris was his most valuable card. It may be the Don Russ. I think it was the Don Russ, dude. There's a few that are definitely. I'm telling you, I think that Don Russ, yes, that's the, it. The 84 Don Russ is yeah. definitely the premier, but the Fleer is also up there as well. Uh, yeah, that's the one right there, dude, the one you just passed. The 84 Don Russ was the best. I yeah, think. the 84 Don Russ, again, PSA 10 value. Look at that. Look at that. 1250. Uh, and then the Fleer is up there. It's a three hundred dollar card, PSA ten. And then the this is a Nestle. This is different, not a top. Yeah, that was from uh, Nestle right Quick. Corner. Did they? Uh, yeah, there's yeah. Opeachy. They Opeachy, you can, Canadian tops. You, you a lot of those you found those in Twinkies, dude. And here you go. There's the tops, the eighty four tops. This is actually a funny. Uh, not, I wouldn't say funny, but Don Mattingly and this card in particular is the basis, is part of a set that they brought back this year, Topps did, uh, for their Project 2020. And they've been having uh, 20 different artists recreate 20 of the most iconic rookie card or 20 of the most iconic Topps cards uh, over the years. And they selected this Don Mattingly to be a part of that set. Uh, so there have been artists... Uh, reimagining uh, this card. It's been pretty cool to see. Is that worth much now or no? This particular card here. No, 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 PS no. The one, the reimagining edition. Yeah, actually, that's funny that you say that because uh, the Project 2020 stuff, let's see. It got really hot a few months ago when everybody had some extra money from unemployment, nothing to spend it on. They were just figuring out about this stuff. Uh, in most cases, you're going to see some of these cards, like here's a Don Mattingly by Andrew Thiel. 20 bucks on that card. These sold originally for $19.99. Um, you could get them cheaper if you bought them in bulk. But some of these are actually going higher than the actual Don Mattingly rookie from 84. Um, oh, that's cool. Here's one of the most sought-after Mattingly's from the set, Blake Jameson. Uh, so this was only 2,400 of these were made, $140 card right now. And then you've got the, the Keith Shore. There's a low print number as well, $228, $75. So there are about 10 or 11 of uh, these artist renditions of this card so far. Uh, they were they're 20 bucks to buy right off the rip. And some of them have increased in value. Some of them were stupid money. Uh, these Project 2020 cards. I actually bought a Mariano Rivera. It was just a rendition of the 1992 Bowman Mariano Rivera. I bought the card for 20 bucks. It came and I ended up selling it for over $1,100. Jeez. Uh, and then the value plummeted a couple of weeks after I sold it. 
as more and more people got into this project 2020 stuff but uh it's definitely a unique uh thing and it really is a marker of how nostalgia is what really sells in sports cards all right let's get back into this anthony as we uh wrap up the 86 the final one the wax pack the 86 wax pack we're still on your screen there sparky there you go all right um so we got Hal McRae. Hal McRae, former Royals manager. Yeah, and just always seemed to be getting ejected from games, didn't he? <laughs> I think there's a, oh, there's also another thing about Hal McRae, if I'm not mistaken. R.J. Reynolds. Go ahead. I'm pretty I'll sure this Hal McRae was on deck. Was Hal McRae on deck when Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's uh, record? Was that Hal McRae or was that somebody else here? No, Hal McRae was on the Reds. He was on the Royals. Yeah, he was on the Royals. Um, yeah, but I mean, Hank Aaron, you're talking about the Braves? Yes, I'm trying to think now. Who was no, on no, because he was not on the Braves and he was on the Reds in 71. Was it, wasn't, wasn't Dusty Baker? Who? Dusty Baker, it was Dusty okay. Baker. All right, so another manager. All right, there's R.J. Reynolds. We got nothing good in this set. We got another spring training. Juan Berenguer. <laughs> who I believe had – why do I remember him for the Tigers? Didn't he have a lot of saves? No, that was Willie Hernandez. Ooh, Rich Gossage. The goose, Goose Gossage, after his trade to the Padres, which he was very pissed off about. Frank – Euphema. <laughs> Euphemia. Dick Ruthven. Solid cub. A full beard. Julio Franco. Julio Franco played into his 50s. I think he literally retired like five years ago. <laughs> Ricky Horton. Greg Harris, and last but not least, rookie Roger Clemens minus Rick Camp. <laughs> so Rick Camp. So that is it, Aussie. Um, do I have anything? I mean, I guess this is probably the best card right here, right? Yeah, you're. And, and what is that Roger even worth Clemens. again? It's uh, can be had for like a buck fifty, two bucks. All right, I got no nothing in this. Maybe an Omattingly All Star. You did not get nine, and, your nine dollars back. No, you packs. don't think I got nine bucks? I am very confident in that. Um, how about the checklist? What did that go for? The eighty-seven checklist. Believe it or not, you can actually some card people, number five twenty-seven. They don't go for anything, but you can uh, you can send them to PSA, and people do use those as part of their complete sets. Really? Uh, yeah. So if anybody, um, I don't, I haven't really looked at the comments. I'm just looking at these cards again. If anybody has any comments, we can answer them. And, and we're going to, uh, before we take off here, Anthony, we're going to uh, let everybody be aware of, of you can sell your wares again. You can sell your, uh, uh, um, sell yourself, if you will. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, Actually, it's a good time. It's about 10 o'clock Eastern right now. In about 15 minutes, I'm going to be breaking a half of a case, six boxes of 2020 top Chrome. So if you're interested in seeing some of today's cards, some of the new cards, which are really bringing people back into the hobby, uh, make sure you like the public page that I dropped there in the comments. It's Empire Sports Breaks. And you'll be able to see the live video in there. And uh, I'll drop it again right here. And I'm just going to show you some eBay sales on uh, the 2020 Topps Chrome. Everybody is hunting the White Sox rookie, Luis Robert. Uh, he is the hot card to have in sync. We saw Hall of Famers, Roger Clemens, uh, some fringe guys like Mattingly and how their cards were $1, $1.50. We saw an Andre Dawson autographed card for 6 bucks. right? Flash forward to 2020. Take a look at the Luis Robert cards out of uh, 2020 Tops Chrome. Here's one for $770. Uh, 
Uh, wow. Number two, 150. Another for seventeen hundred twenty-four dollars. So that is the car. Look at this, twelve thousand dollars. This car sold for. That's great at nine point five. Uh, so to give you guys kind of an idea, uh, the teams we were selling uh, in this break for tonight, we did random teams. It was sixty dollars a spot. So our friend that ended up with the with the White Sox. For $60, he's got a shot to pull a Luis Robert autograph tonight. And look at these, $635, $500. Anthony, a couple couple of questions, because this fascinates the hell out of me. Why is is he, you know, obviously, even like we joke with the Greg Jeffries from the 89 tops, you know, the, the future star, you're taking a chance. Is it because... They, this is a guy that everybody thinks is going to be the next big thing, like the Wander Franco, the Adley Rushman. Um, is it a combination of that and this fact that it's a rare card, that there's not a lot of them issued? Like, why is he worth so damn much money? Well, here's the thing right now, uh, and I would say beginning really in 2011, uh, with the 2011 Tops update set, which yielded the Mike Trout rookie. At the time, Mike Trout was not so much a highly touted prospect uh, but what happened was his card, uh, as the years went on, and the guy who's finishing top three in the MVP every single year, his card exploded in value. Um, and people really now are afraid to miss out on anything. So now there's an increased scope on rookies. People are holding on to all their rookies. So it does become a little bit difficult, even though the cards are being produced right now. Uh, a Luis Robert card, there might be a, a handful of them, a ton of them in the market, really. But for everyone that's selling, uh, there's, you know, people out there that are holding that card as well. So the demand is still higher than the supply, so to speak. And then the, the, the price of the unopened wax really balloons as people go to chase uh, these cards. So think of like uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Everybody's chasing the five golden tickets. So you would expect that the price of the chocolate bars just balloons out of control. That's exactly what happens right now. But- there's people... There's people waiting at their local targets, 15 to 20 people standing, waiting for the vendor to come and bring the sports cards so they can buy them up and resell them on eBay for triple, sometimes five times the value. Uh, Things are just really ballooning out of control. And a lot of that is attributed to, like I said, the boom beginning in 2011 with the Trout rookie. But then you also have guys like Gary V uh, and other popular uh, investors that are basically telling their audience sports cards is a viable investment. So you've got sneaker flippers and other uh, short-term investors coming into the market. They're going to buy this Luis Robert card for $500, hoping that in three weeks he goes on a tear, rips five home runs in five days, and that card balloons in value 30%, and then they wash their hands of it. Uh, But there's – there's definitely an element of danger with that because you could buy a $770 Luis Robert uh, autograph rookie card today. And then in two weeks he blows his knee out uh, and he might be done for the season. And that card turns into a $150 auto uh, and you lose a ton of money on it. So there's definitely risk involved, uh, but a lot of people are willing to take those risks, especially now in the coronavirus pandemic, when people have, Uh, If they're unemployed, they're getting the extra money. They're spending it on that. Uh, The stimulus checks, people are spending the stimulus check money on that. Uh, So definitely a huge boom right now, especially in basketball uh, with Zion Williamson and John Morant, but also in baseball, Luis Robert Fernando Tatis Jr. right now is blowing up with the season he's had. Ronald Acuna Jr., Juan Soto, those young guys that people are hoping turn into the next Mike Trout, so to speak, uh, where they can buy in uh, somewhat low and then balloon uh, within the next 10 years. Very interesting stuff. And, and, you know, it's funny because who knew that, you know, one of these guys could have been the Luis Robert back then, but these, they were just, and again, the reason these things are worth so little is because what, there was just too many of them produced. I mean, is that, is that yes, the difference there's... between now and then? I mean, there, I imagine there's not, Luis Roberts, so many commons of him, the way there were back then of these guys, right? No, definitely not. So again, we refer to that 
time period between maybe 79 to, to 1980. The year the I was... The early 2000s. The, the that's, years I was collecting. Thanks. Yes, the years you were collecting. That's what we, we call the junk wax era. And a lot of people will say uh, we're entering a junk wax era now because there's so many people in the hobby. What they're comparing is in the 80s and 90s, there were so many people in the hobby. You had card shows every weekend, everywhere you looked around. There's hobby shops popping up. Uh, we are not entering a junk wax era right now. And the reason being is because demand is still far outweighing the supply. Uh, they're not printing as many cards. So there's different products available now. In the 80s, you might have only had uh, flagship tops, Donruss, Fleer. Now tops has an exclusive baseball license. They're printing a ton of different products. New products come out every week. But the product, uh, the print run of those individual products is not the same. Like I said, you could go out and you can still buy unopened packs and even cases from the 1980s. You, you can't even, if you try and go buy unopened packs right now or an unopened case of cards from 2011 to now, you're either paying exorbitant costs uh, or you're not finding it. It's just, it doesn't exist like it does for the 80s and 90s cards because the print runs are small and everybody's ripping them open. Uh, I would say over half of uh, the print run of products is being opened in the first couple weeks of the product release now. So it's just, it's not going to be there. Uh, there are people out there. I know hobby shops that hold on to cases, you know, and wait for 10 years down the road. And they know that the demand is going to be high because there's always going to be one or two rookies to chase. Uh, and if you have a case of let's, let's just take a look at this before we go 2011 tops update, Mike Trout PSA 10. I'll show you the screen here. This is a card I'm telling you in 2011, you could have traded this for a superstar or you could have had this card for a buck to $5. Uh, it's taken a second to load here for some reason, but this is a card that's over a thousand dollars now. You have it. I don't personally have it. It's it's uh, we're loading here for the recent sale. So Aussie, real quick, while you're loading that, what's so is is um, what's the hottest card? The one you just mentioned. The right hottest now, card? What is right now, Luis? Is this Robert? Uh, Luis Robert card? One of the hottest. Luis Robert is. At a tops chrome right now, definitely what you're looking for because it's a rookie. Uh, but you're also looking for uh, rookies like Kyle Lewis is performing well this year with the Mariners, so his stuff is going up. Bo Bichette is a guy that I'm very bullish on. You can still get his cards. He was just injured. He's hurt. Yeah, he's hurt. Yeah, he's hurt. He's maybe off of these. Up. Now's a perfect time to buy. Honestly, he's on uh, my fantasy team. He might be done for the year. Yeah, and even if he is, now is the time to buy because I really I project him to be a generational player. Uh, you could have his cards last a, a couple weeks ago for two dollars a piece. Those are cards that are going to go up in value. And uh, same deal, Fernando Tatis Jr. out of 2019 tops series two. That is a card that is ballooning. Here's the Mike Trout again. Guys, this is a card that could have been had for a couple dollars in 2011. You're looking at a $35 oh my dollar card. God. And this is a guy that is still playing. He's not a Hall of Famer. Uh, I mean, he's probably a Hall of Famer if he retired tomorrow, uh, but he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. So people are projecting Mike Trout to end up with numbers better than the likes of Mickey Mantle uh, by oh, he, the time he's done. So, Dude, he's ridiculous. He, 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 he was out for – he was on my uh, in our fantasy league. I had the tenth pick, and I got him at ten because everyone was worried: is he going to opt out? His wife's having the baby. He missed like three freaking games, and he's got yep. ten homers now. He's he's ridiculous. Look yep. at that! So a consistent two thousand to to thirty five hundred for that trout card. Here's one that I had that went for it. the The best offer accepted was under twelve thousand. But what makes me sick is I actually owned this card. Uh, in 2011 and uh, probably sold it for maybe $300, $400. And now you're looking at a card that's north of $5,000. Um, so yeah, definitely people are latching on to the rookies of today, hoping that they're the next trout, you know, and that's awesome. why you're seeing such a boom right now. 
All right. Anthony, well, I appreciate it, man. It was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I didn't pull anything of any value. I don't think I got my nine, I 16 bucks with shipping. I don't think I got anything worthwhile. But uh, uh, again, you can uh, have people join your empire breaks and they can't get into your break tonight because you're full. But a future break, $10 off if you mention you watch the sink off unboxing uh, and chewing the gum. You're in for 10 bucks. Could that get you into a break? All in or no? 10 bucks might get you a low end team if we do a pick your team break. Uh, but I would say use that $10 wisely. Invest a little bit of your coin into a better team. Uh, we're we're going to be opening uh, 2020 Tops archives later this week, which is fun because it dives into. Uh, redesigning, not redesigning, but using the players of today on past designs. Uh, so that's a fun product. And uh, you can get some of those players that you collected as a kid in that product, as well as players from today. But definitely let me know if you, uh, if you watched us in sync offs video tonight, and we'll get you that $10 off. And Adley Rushman, has he got anything good for him? Next thing Adley's going to be in, he was just in Bowman Sterling. That just came out. That was a higher-end product. He'll probably end up being in Bowman Draft and Bowman's Best later on in the winter. Well, he gets – would that be good value? Yeah, Adley's a great value right now. All right. Anthony, you're the best, buddy. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for watching this special Zoom Facebook Live uh, opening uh, 80s baseball cards and chewing the gum. Uh, I will report back on Facebook later uh, if I got sick. But so far, the tummy's, <laughs> the tummy's feeling good. Uh, hold all calls to the doctor. Uh, I think we're all right, though. Don't hey, try this at home, fun. kids. All right, buddy. Be well, Anthony. All right. Take care, my friend. Good luck. Have a good break tonight. See you. All right. Thanks, pal. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.